for the sake of saying I am. It is something that the Jewish people knew, and it is something that meant something to them in their culture. The first time we see the words I am in the Bible is when Moses is at the burning bush. You will remember that Moses was keeping the flocks of his father-in-law Jethro, and he had gone off to look for a, um, a lost animal, as tradition would have it. And he finds himself up on the mountain of God, and he sees a burning bush. And from that burning bush, God speaks to him and says, I have called you to lead the Israelites out of captivity in Egypt. Moses was called to provide deliverance and salvation in an earthly sense from bondage. And Moses asks God, what is your name? In verse 13, he says, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now, this is really interesting, this phrase, I am who I am. And it can be rendered a number of different ways. Up on the screen, Eye Asher, Eye, is the Hebrew expression for it. And you can see over here how that is rendered in the original Hebrew script. Now, this is the personal name of God. This is how God wished himself to be known to the Israelites. And it's actually rather interesting because if you, are, if you were to ask the Jews how you would translate this into English, they would actually say something like, I will be what I will be because it is in what we call the imperfect tense, which implies that it has not yet been completed. So you could have it as, I was who I was, I am being who I am being, I will be what I will be, I will become whatsoever I please, which let's keep that in mind because that gets interesting a little bit later. So God is here saying, I am the existent one. Everything else in the world requires a cause. I exist because my parents loved each other very much. This church exists because someone uh, bought bricks and steel and built it. The world exists because God created it. But why does God exist? God exists because of his own power. When it says, I am who I am, it can be, I am that I am, I am which I am. It is God exists because he exists. And no other explanation is necessary. He does not need to justify himself to anyone. He exists under his own power and he is dependent on nobody. Indeed, he himself gives life to everything. So it's important to note that when God introduces himself to Moses as, I am who I am, I am that I am, I am which I am, I will be what I will be, I will become whatever I please, he is saying, I am the all-powerful God. Nothing is too hard from, for me. I can be and I will be everything to you that you need. So when God says, I am who I am, 
that is not just a statement of his power. That is a statement of his promise. And let's keep that in mind. Now, why does Moses ask, what name shall I give to the people of Israel? You remember he asks, what shall, what shall I say to them when they ask, what is his name? Who doesn't know his name? Does Moses not know his name? Or do the Israelites not know his name? Because it's highly implied, and a lot of commentators will say, that it was actually Moses that did not know the name of God. Remember, if you will, that Moses had been brought up as a kid in the house of his mother, but after the age of 12, he was brought up in the household of Pharaoh. He was a scion of the noble houses now that oppressed the Israelites. And although he remained faithful, and although God blessed him in his time as a prince of Egypt, no doubt he did not have access to the same worship as did the Israelites. The Israelites were able to worship God without fear. Well, no more fear than they usually had. And Moses is not able to do that. He is not able to openly participate because how embarrassing, how humiliating, how suspect it would be for a prince of Egypt to indulge in the Hebrew faith. So he has spent some time away from the Hebrews and he does not know. So God has said to him, you will say, I am who I am, and by this, the Israelites will know that it is me who sent you, because you could not have known this without me telling you, given your experiences and given what you have learned. And in saying, I am, has sent me to you, the, the Israelites will then know that Moses is not coming in his own strength, but he's coming in the power of God. There's actually quite a number of similarities, and the Gospel writers consciously highlight these similarities that Jesus has to be the fulfillment of the law that Moses gave. From God, of course. Now, we have to remember that the Jews back in that time, they believed that Moses was everything. He was the one who inaugurated the covenant. He was the one who delivered to them the law. He was the one who showed them what it meant to be, what it meant to be faithful. Moses was the most important human in Jewish belief. And the Gospel writers, especially in Matthew, take great pains to show that Jesus was the inaugurator of the New Covenant in the same way that Moses was the one who gave the Old Covenant. So we see some of these, um, we see some of these similarities here. Uh, where are we? Oh, there we are. So where is the thing? So Moses escaped being killed as a baby, as did Jesus. Moses was not an Egyptian, but he lived among Egyptians when he was young, as did Jesus. Uh, Moses was raised with the legal right to become a king, but belonged to a nation oppressed by a pagan and foreign government. We see that Jesus had the same legal right to kingship because he was of the line of David. And yet the line of David could not take the throne because it was under the occupation of the Romans. Moses freed his people from, slav from slavery through a lamb without blemish, a, a one-year-old male lamb. And Jesus was the fulfillment of that. 
using his own blood, being the Lamb of God, without blemish, without sin, without any, without any defect that could be imputed to him. Moses came out of Egypt, as did Jesus. Moses passed through the Red Sea. Jesus passed through the waters of baptism. Despite the fact that Jesus himself did not need to be baptized because he did not sin, he provided it as an example to lead us through the waters of baptism as the Israelites were led through the waters of the Red Sea. Indeed, it's further, gospel, uh, further writers like Paul actually notes that the Israelite people were baptized through their passing through the Red Sea. Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness preparing, and the people spent 40 years as well. Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness. That, word, uh, that number 40 is significant because in Hebrew, 40 has the meaning of probation, testing. Would they be found wanting or would they be found acceptable? The Israelites fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, as did Jesus when he spent his time in the wilderness. Now, while in the wilderness, the Israelites were administered to by angels and they were tempted, as was Jesus. Moses gave the law from Mount Sinai and Jesus gave a new law from the, uh, from the, sermon, in the sermon on the Mount. So there are a number here of similarities here and the astute Jew would have noticed all of these things happening in the life of Jesus. The stories would have got around. Jesus, after his baptism, went into the wilderness. Uh, it, it would have been obvious to them that when he gave his Sermon on the Mount from the Mount, that was a conscious reflection of being at Mount Sinai. So it's pretty clear that Jesus is the new and better uh, bringer of the covenant. Mo uh, Jesus is the fulfillment of what Moses set out to do. Moses was the promise, Jesus was the fulfillment. So when Jesus says, I am, the bread of life, the way, the truth, and the life, the light of the world. When Jesus says those things, he is very consciously evoking the same password as did Moses. Remember, Moses asks, what shall I say to them so they know that you sent me? Say, the I am has sent me to you. But what does Jesus then say? He says, I am. What he, then, what he then follows it with. Where Moses says, the I am has sent me to you, Jesus says, I am. He is deliberately and obviously to the Israelites saying, I am the one who sent Moses and I am the one who is to be to you as God was to the Israelites in the desert. So what do these statements mean for us? Remember that we said that one of the possible interpretations of I am who I am could be, I will become whatever I please. So what does Jesus want to be for us. Because each of these statements is a promise. And not to steal the thunder of the people who will be going after and sharing from their insights, but what does it mean to us that Jesus is the bread of life? What does it mean to us that Jesus is the light of the world? What does it mean to us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? Because all of these things should mean something to us in our experience. These are not things that God says, 
I just want you to have an intellectual assent to them. I just want you to have a mental checklist in your mind saying, oh yes, I can, I can agree with the statement, I am the bread of life. Jesus wants us to ask ourselves, how do we need the bread of life in our life? How can Jesus provide us with the light of the world shining through us? How can Jesus be our direction, our way, the truth, and the life? This is what the I am statements mean. They are not just statements about God. They are statements about what God wants to be to us. So as we are considering those things, we need to be aware of that. This is not just a this is not just an intellectual exercise. This is not just learning more things. This is God giving us a message and saying, I want you to make this part of you. So as we hear from the speakers in this series going forward, let's consider that. As each person shares from their insights, the appeal I have for us is that we might ask, what is God trying to be for us in our lives? What is God reminding us that we need more of? How is God taking us in our hardship, in our trial, in our complications, and saying that I will be your strength in a time where you feel only weakness? How might Jesus' I am statements mean something in our lives today? Now, not to step on the, the toes of the people who are going forward, I would love to be able to get into some of these statements, but that is for them to do. So it is my prayer for you all that as we go through this series, the Holy Spirit might be among each and every one, one of us, and to convict us of the things that God wants us to understand and to invite him to be a more integral part of who we are and how we interact with the world around us. Let's say a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you care about us. Thank you that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. You are the same God that appeared to Moses. You are the same God that sent your son down to show us your character. You were the same God then and you are the same God now. You have preserved your word through many, many things in history that we might know of your goodness and your grace. And over the next couple of weeks... We pray that you would provide us a deeper understanding, not just in thought, but also in our heart as well. Give us your spirit. Make us more like you. Help us to know that you love us. Know that you are everything to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have Sabbath school classes, uh, one in the church, one in the back.